Assessment, Environmental Impact Assessment in Nigeria. When we say Environmental Impact Assessment, we are also referring to other acronyms that is being used internationally and in other countries, which is Environmental and Social Impact Assessment, sometimes Environmental, Social and Health Impact Assessment, sometimes Cumulative Impact Assessment. So there are different acronyms being used, but right now we are actually looking at environmental impact assessment as it applies in Nigeria. And today we are focused on the statutory fees. Remember, we are on a series of models. So this particular model is focused on the statutory fees payable to federal ministry of environment in Nigeria when you're considering to do environmental impact assessment. This is a guide. Let me do a disclaimer. This is a guide. This is a document we got from the Federal Ministry of Environment and it changes from time to time. This is not a final document you should work with. If you send us an email, info at richflood.com, richflood we'll be able to send you updated statutory fees that is payable in Nigeria based on our experience interacting with the Federal Ministry of Environment and based on information available part time. So this is not developed by Rich Flood. This is developed by the Federal Ministry of Environment and shared with Rich Flood to be able to advise her client on how to go about preparing for the statutory fees for environmental impact assessment. We have a lot of clients and a lot of proponents investing in some projects and they are worried, they want to know how much it costs to undertake an EIA. They want to know what to budget for environmental impact assessment. So we have two components for environmental impact assessment, the consultancy fees and the statutory fees. So the statutory fees goes to the Federal Ministry of Environment directly through the remitter uh, account, that's through the Treasury single account of Nigeria. All payments are paid there except maybe operational fees that is being paid maybe on the sites or relevant uh, locations pertaining to the project. But all payments are paid to the tre Treasury single account. You log into the Federal Ministry of Environment uh, portal on remita.com. I think it's remita.com. You log into the remitter.com and then find Federal Ministry of Environment and then you see all these components that we are going to share in this video. You will see it I mean, uh, listed in the portal and then you can select what you're paying for and pay directly. Usually when this payment is made, then you can now send the information to reach flood office for us to process uh, whatever needs to be processed with the Federal Ministry of Environment based on your payments. So you can reach us if there are issues or there are hiccups or there are mistakes, you know, based on your payments or based on your selection of what you need to uh, pay for on the Remita platform. You can reach us at info at richflow.com. Better still, you can reach the project office at uh, projects with S, projects, at richflow.com so that such issues can be addressed. So I will go through the statutory fees that are payable. I will read through them. This is not edited. This is just gotten from the Ministry of Environment. And this is useful for your planning. It may not be 100% uh, obtainable or 100% updated at the time you may be watching this video, but this is certainly good for planning your statutory fees and budgeting your projects when you are looking at the planning stage of your environmental impact assessment. We have taken other models before now. We have captured other models that has to do with what is environmental impact assessment. In case this is the first model you're listening to, you have to go back to the other models we have done before on our YouTube channel, Rich Flood Environmental and Social Specialists. If you enter that, you will find uh, Rich Flood handle and then you can please uh, follow us so that you can have updates regularly and then it will really help even your staff please get them to listen to this video and then the most questions that have been asked at rich flood office could have been solved if these videos have uh, been watched by your staff so we'll dive in straight send us emails and you can call our office if you have our details we'll drop it down below and follow us please on twitter Instagram and YouTube. 
So this is the document we are going to be working with, Federal Ministry of Environment, Environmental Impact Assessment Charges. So you can see stage by stage, you can see uh, activity that you are going to undertake under what category of project, because we have category one and category two projects, and we have environmental and social management plans uh, there are associated fees to be paid for, for that. And then the type of charge, the remarks on the type of charge. Is it a revenue to government or is operational? Let me explain the difference. A revenue to government, like I said earlier, is the one you pay um, and it goes to government purse. It's not used for any operations during the EIA exercise, then the operational charges are charges that is used to maybe assess your site, um, accompanying the consultant to take a sample, I mean to, to do some baseline studies, environmental baseline studies, you know, for the wet and dry season and we, depending on the category of the project. So you have remarks, maybe upper limit means, for instance, uh, item number three, scoping workshop showing upper limit. Upper limit means uh, this is the maximum. That's my understanding of this document. It means this is the maximum amount it could go for. It means that it could be less. It could be less than that. Okay, so you see registration is 50,000 Naira for category one and two projects and even for ESMPs. The projects are either category one, category two or ESMP. ESMPs are done for projects that uh, perhaps have been operating after some time before the EIA is done or you just want to undertake an ESMP as a standalone study and a standalone document you want documented for your project. So it's 50,000 Naira you pay as registration. And this is a revenue to the government. So you use the Remita platform to make this payment. So then the site verification exercise is 500,000 Naira approximate value. It could be less if you are in Abuja, it could be less than that because the Federal Ministry of Environment officials will visit your site for site verification before the visit your site for site verification before the scoping workshop. So 500,000 Naira is paid for the site verification exercise. And this is an approximate value. In Abuja, it could be less. In Kaduna, it could be less. In Lagos, it could be this amount or thereabout. In, in, in Kaduna, I think it's 388,000 Naira, you know, estimated 400,000 Naira. So it depends. This is an approximate value. Then you have this stage after the site verification exercise called the scoping workshop. At this scoping workshop, the scope of the studies to be undertaken, the stakeholders to be consulted, how all of this is going to be planned and to what extent is going to the study is going to be is been determined at this stage. So this is an operational fee, two hundred and fifty thousand that is paid to the Federal Ministry of Environment. That is and this is an upper limit and is being used for transportation, uh, logistics, maybe lodging, and all of that. That's why it is called operational in this case. Then you have the data gathering witnessing. Like I said, when baseline environmental data is being gathered, the Federal Ministry of Environment officials witness this data gathering exercise, and the amount estimated as an approximate value is 250,000 Naira. Okay, so sometimes it goes a bit higher, sometimes it's lower. It can be quite lower. So this this amounts are extrapolated. It's not a a one a one figure amount that you should uh, go with. So you can you can work with this somehow, you know, and it will be fine along the line. Then laboratory witnessing, you know, uh, the Federal Ministry of Environment comes to Rich Flood Laboratory from time to time on particular projects to witness the analysis of um, the testing that is being done, the chain of custody, the quality issues, quality checks, quality assurance, you know, this is done with this amount of money. In-house technical reviews, when there is an in-house technical review, it means that uh, the, the, the review is done internally at the Ministry of Environment and 200,000 Naira is paid for both the category one and two and both the, and including the ESMPs, okay? So you have the panel reviews, the panel reviews 
uh, you can see that margin. That margin is huge, right? You have 1 million Naira. Please note that all of this is in Naira. All of these figures I'm talking about is Naira because we're talking about Nigeria, please. This is Nigeria. We're talking about and it is in Naira. So 1 million Naira to 10 million Naira. This is the point that we have a lot of clients saying, what? This is too much. But what can we do? That's the estimations for now. So you can plan with this. So the panel review actually, um, 10 million Naira, yes, as the max, but you have, from experience, we have 2.5 million, we have 2 million, we have 3.5, 3 million, you know, along that. Um, we have not actually done in rich flood, am I right? We have not done uh, a panel review that is exceeding 5 million Naira. However, during the panel review exercise, there are a lot of arrangements to be made to make it a heat free exercise. So that can lead to uh, you spending so much money to make sure that the hotel bookings are done, to make sure that uh, everything goes on fine, vehicles are provided for uh, conveying people from the site to their hotels and from their hotels to the site. Because during the panel review, like I said in my previous uh, webinar, I said that the panelists will have to visit the site. So this is an important point to note. So don't panic about 10 million. It is in between, okay? It is in between, but this is how we got the document. So then the newspaper and radio adverts were applicable to be determined according to prevailing rates. As at the time I am making this uh, uh, publication, I mean making this presentation, the amount for a quarter page in the newspaper is 150,000 Naira. 150,000 Naira. And sometimes you may cover three or uh, two or three or even four newspapers. So you can do your mathematics and see how much that comes to. So you can budget like 500 to 600,000 to do your newspaper adverts and the radio adverts because the radio adverts are done in the States newspaper adverts done in the state as well and then you take two or three national newspapers as well and do publications so by the time you spend six hundred thousand you are okay then when it comes to esmps in most cases we do not do the advertisement it's in rare cases so this is optional and this is operational because you're paying the newspaper agencies i mean the newspaper uh, uh, companies to get this done. So number nine is impact mitigation monitoring. The first visit is 500,000 Naira for ESMP is 400,000 Naira. This is operational. Impact mitigation monitoring takes place after the environmental impact assessments have been executed. After the environmental impact assessments have been executed. So impact mitigation, just like the name implies, the impact that have been identified during the environmental impact assessment or during the environmental and social management plan uh, activities is now being monitored, is being followed to check if these impacts have been, um, have been mitigated during construction phase or operational phase, mostly construction phases because uh, impact mitigation is conducted immediately after the EIA has been concluded and the project has commenced. So this is the amount, 500,000 and 400,000 Naira for ESMP. 500,000 for Category 1 and Category 2 ESIAs. So newspaper publication of environmental impact statement. Now environmental impact statement is your certificate. It's your certificate for conducting an environmental impact assessment. So uh, this newspaper publication rate is to be determined by the Federal Ministry of Environment. The Federal Ministry of Environment does this publication. Unlike the item eight, where you can organize this by yourself or Rich Flood can organize this for you. But item 10, in most cases, is executed by the Federal Ministry of Environment. For ESMP, it is waived. Then number 11, you have the final access charge. The final access charge is, have, is having a chart uh, below. It's in this slide, but I'm afraid we will not be able to take that aspect today, but I will run through this on another uh, webinar so that you can we can relate this item number 11 with the final access charge. 
So it's quite, uh, let me say estimated, it could be between 1.5 million to maybe 4 million. And there are some parameters that is being used to check how much you should pay per hectare of your land take, how much is taken. If it's a project, uh, if it's a transmission line, if it's a, a power sector project and you're building a transmission line per kilometer, this is how much is being charged, you know, like that. I'll bring the chart, charts later on. And then you have the violation um, charges. You have the violation charges, which is from one million, I mean, from one naira to uh, one million naira. One naira means there's no violation, actually. But one million naira means that you have violated. When is it, when is it that I have violated? When you commence your project before commencing the environmental impact assessment, that means you have violated the law. That's the violation charges. During the panel review and your site is visited and you have commenced projects, you have, you have destroyed the biodiversity already, you know, all the animals are gone, all the trees are gone, and then you, you are just in the middle of the project and you are commencing an environmental impact assessment, so you have violated the EIA Act. You have violated the EIA Act and these charges will apply. But if none of these, if your environment is still pristine, it's still green, and there are no, uh, there's no tampering with the vegetation, with the entire environment, there's no tampering with the lifestyle of the people yet, then it's actually, it can even be zero naira, <laughs> you know, it can be zero naira. So this is revenue to the government and is paid directly to the uh, remitter. Uh, account, the TSA account, the, I mean the Treasury single account. So I will pause here and I'll bring you the other, this is part one of checking the statutory fees. There is a lot to talk about uh, in this in this category of, um, of uh, dealing with the statutory fees from the Federal Ministry of Environment of Nigeria. But thank you very much for listening. I hope this is helpful so that when you come to the Rich Flood Office, you already have an idea what you're looking at and it will be easy for us to just make some quick progress when it comes to financial budgeting for your project. Again, reach us at info at richflood.com and follow our Twitter handle and our um, Instagram page. And most importantly, the YouTube channel. Please find our channel by all means and follow us so that we can bring to you the other uh, versions of the statutory fees for your proper understanding. Thank you very much.